Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Pegasus 37 after 100 miles. Eleven point four eight miles, eight minutes, thirty four seconds per mile, one hundred and forty six beats per minute on a very hot and humid run here in New Vienna, Iowa. With today's miles, I was able to get the Pegasus thirty seven over the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I get into my thoughts on this shoe after one hundred miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent the shoe to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview my thoughts or footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Pegasus 37. Now this is a shoe that I had been very interested in all year ever since I learned that it was gonna have a React midsole. And that's important because for the past several years, the Pegasus shoe has always had a Zoom Air Pocket, it's a special kind of Nike Air, uh, in the midsole and that around that was a, a foam called Kushlon, which was very comfortable foam, but one that had been getting a little bit long in the teeth perhaps. And so with this year, with the React foam becoming more popular and more widespread throughout the Nike line, it finally got the Pegasus treatment this year and I was pretty excited about it. And what did that feel like? It ended up with a daily trainer that was very useful for just about everything that I could throw at it. For my easy days and my everyday runs, the shoe was very comfortable to run in. Uh, running in the hills, both here in New Vienna and over in the other house we were staying in over the summer in Guttenberg, in the bluffs over there. Very capable up and down the hills on road and on the dirt road surfaces. And I was able to even get some speed work in here with, on today's run, a couple of bursts of 5K pace effort. And the shoe does well at all of those things. So how does it do all that? Well, it does it with that React foam that I mentioned. And there is a bunch of it in here. It just feels like a much taller shoe than it's been in recent years. Last year's shoe, for example, had 12 millimeters of stack height in the front uh, with a 10 millimeter heel drop. So there was a little bit more material in the back. This year, it's that same heel drop, so the same angle of attack, so to speak, but there's 14 millimeters of stack height. Now that extra two millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but it certainly feels like that. If not more than that, I'm actually somewhat skeptical that there's only 14 millimeters of stack height in the front of this shoe. For this year, for the men and the women, they've tuned the shoes a little bit differently where the men's Zoom Air Pocket has a certain PSI and the women's has a slightly lesser PSI given the differences in weight and other mechanics that go into the way men and women run a little bit differently. After the 100 miles, what was the React and the new Zoom Air setup like? It's been holding up fantastic. The one thing that I thought from the beginning, I still think now, they made great fanfare about the new Zoom Air Pocket. And I would say that I don't really know what the big deal is. I'm not really sensing anything new or different in the Zoom Air Pocket. A lot of times, I feel like I can't even tell that it's there. The one time that I thought I might be feeling it more substantially was in those faster paces that I was running today. As you run faster, as you're running harder, you're hitting the ground harder and pushing off. So there's more impact and forces involved. Uh, and I didn't really feel like my feet were getting beat up quite so much. Now, I don't think this is the fastest shoe that's out there in the market. I think that Nike has shoes that are better tailored and better suited for very fast running. Uh, lots of other brands do as well. But as far as a daily trainer goes that can handle some of those speeder workouts, this does a pretty good job. Now, after 100 miles in this shoe, how is the shoe holding up? Well, I feel like the shoe still feels super fresh. And that's one of the great things about React Foam. It's pretty much indestructible and it seems to last forever. I feel like you're going to get a lot more out of this Pegasus than you probably would out of any other previous Pegasus if you run in Pegasus 
before. And that I think is solely gonna be attributable to the React phone and the amazing way that it just holds up over time. It still feels like a very fresh shoe. It'd be hard pressed to believe that there's 100 miles in this midsole. You might be tipped off by some of the wear that's happening on the upper. Now it's not, there's nothing's falling apart. It's holding up fantastically well as Nike uppers tend to, or at least in my experience. Uh, but I am seeing a little bit of puckering that's happening over here over time. The shoes got sweat in it, it gets wet, it gets dry. And so I feel like you could see a little bit of wear happening on the upper of this shoe, but it is holding up fantastically well. Material is are holding up fine. The one thing I will say is the Pegasus always, it strikes me as a little bit of a hot shoe. Uh, it's a shoe that always comes out in June, or I think it always comes out in June, but yet the material is nice. It is somewhat breathable, but it's kind of padded too. And I feel like they could get rid of that layer of padding, make it a little bit thinner, a little bit more comfortable for that summer running. There is a little bit of padding up in this heel area with this little Achilles flare as well. Very comfortable. A lot of this, I just don't even notice. There is a little bit of structure up in the heel, uh, not too much, not too assertive, kind of just in the middle, just right in terms of being comfortable for that everyday use. Then flipping down to the outsole, the outsole is holding up just absolutely amazing for me. This year, I spent a lot of my time with this shoe on dirt roads. Uh, so like crushed limestone, dirt roads, a little bit of rocks, but mostly relatively soft surfaces. Uh, and I think that's showing in terms of the outsole wear, although the outsole usually wear is pretty good on the Pegasus lineup. Uh, this year, uh, though, what I'm surprised by is that normally I see a decent amount of wear right here on most of my shoes and especially on Pegasus with the way that the outsole pattern is designed. Uh, and I'm hardly seeing any wear at all. Not really seeing a lot of wear in the forefoot. I can kind of feel it as I run my hand over it, but I'm not really noticing it visually. One of the things that I was particularly curious about when this shoe came out was with React Foam, there's been lots of Nike shoes where you run directly on the React Foam and it makes you a little bit nervous. You're like, is this gonna hold up over time all right? But I've run in those shoes, they've held up just fine. And I thought maybe with React Foam in this shoe, they could cut some weight and have us run directly on the React Foam surface. But that's not what they did. Instead, they left it with kind of full rubber coverage like they have in previous years. And that's confusing, because this year, this shoe, at least the listed weight is for a size 10, I have a size nine, but the listed weight for a size 10 tips the scale at over 10 ounces which is a half an ounce heavier than it was last year. So we're going in the wrong direction there. And I thought one way they could say that is with getting rid of some of this rubber, but it's still here. So that's one thing that I would definitely consider changing going forward. If we're gonna keep reacting here, let's take full benefit of what that React Foam has to offer. But overall, a fantastic daily trainer. The other last thing that I will kind of point out that this is Nike's daily trainer. It's a one shoe suits most. Think about all the different kinds of runners that Nike shoes have to appeal to. And so I think on the edges, people that run very short, very fast distances or very long distances, this might not be the best everyday trainer for those ends of the spectrum. But for the vast majority of people, this is probably going to be one of the best daily trainers that you're going to be able to pick up for this year in 2020. So those are my thoughts on the Pegasus 37 after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or if you've been running this shoe. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, especially if you've run in previous Pegasus versions before. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?